Hey guys, so lately I've been thinking of doing a personal project and I couldn't really figure it out ever since the home theater PC project. I really haven't done anything and I've been craving to do some sort of electronics project. And after much thought and consideration, I decided that I'm going to modify an old iPod. Now what I mean by that is, uh, I don't know if you guys remember these. These are the third generation uh, iPods, the regular iPods that came out in 2003. This is uh, just about three years old now. Or not three years old, what am I saying? Ten years old. I'm sorry about that. If you can hear that, that is a mechanical hard drive inside of this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the mechanical hard drive and replace it with a flash memory hard drive, a SSD, compact flash, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, going to be solid state memory in this iPod. So it's kind of like bringing the old school with the new school. To do that, I'm going to need a few parts. And if you guys want to follow along and do this yourself, I will list out the parts, show you pictures of what they look like. And you guys can do this for yourselves. This also works with the fourth generation, fifth generation, and even probably the classics you could modify to work with flash memory. But what you're going to need here is I wrote it down because it's, uh, it, it's a lot of stuff if you don't have everything already. Obviously, you're going to need an iPod. And um, what I did was I bought a second iPod only because, uh, which also doesn't work, dead battery. Both of them have dead batteries. This works, but the battery's dead. And that hard drive sounds like it's pretty bad already, so that, I don't know how much life that really has. So, iPod. And if you want another iPod for parts, that's always nice to have. Uh, you're going to want a battery. If the battery is dead, even if you just want to upgrade the battery, it's not a bad idea because they had some pretty bad batteries in them. So I bought this battery. It's uh, 850 milliamps com compared, or 850 milliamps an hour compared to the stock one, which is 630 milliamps. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, upgrade battery. This was 15 bucks at uh, iFixit.com. iPod iPod for parts if you want a second iPod for parts battery if your battery is dead or it's bad or in general I highly recommend changing it because the battery is if it's not bad it's gonna go bad at some point and you might as well just change it to avoid any problems you're gonna need uh, a converter that's gonna convert from the Toshiba hard drive which is in iPods and that's gonna convert from IDE to ATA ATA is the compact flash memory I, I don't know if there's another form factor for them but um, you might want to double check. Make, the converters usually are IDE to ATA, and compact flashes are usually ATA, also known as PATA, P A T A. Let's not get too technical here, but you're going to need that. I'll put an image here so you know uh, what to look for and what it should look like. Um, I do believe that you could use the third generation converter that I'm using that I bought for the fourth and fifth generation. But please double check. Don't quote me on that. I haven't looked into it but it should be uh, either the same or similar. Next up, you're going to need the compact flash that we're going to be using. Now these aren't um, SSD drives, they're not flash drives, they're a uh, different type of flash memory, they use a different form factor, and uh, that's, that's what we're going to be using, and that is what people primarily use for this kind of modification. <clears throat> so we're going to need that. You could buy 32, they go up to 128 gigabytes, you really don't need 128 gigabytes if you have an old iPod because these don't play video, it's, it only plays music. Um, if you have an iPod video, honestly, why would you watch a video on that small screen regardless? But I went with 32 <clears throat> only because I want, I want to have extra room in there in case I put, I don't know, 7500 songs if I want or something. I don't know how many songs 32 gigabytes holds, but I'm sure it's a lot and it's probably more music than I have. Next up. Um, these iPods, these iPods used FireWire to sync and charge. Now, you can use USB to sync, but you cannot use USB to charge. So if you have the current iPod charge, or not the current, current is lightning port, but if you have the last generation iPod wires, which were the 30 pin, you could sync with them, but you won't be able to charge. So if your computer does not have a FireWire port, this is where it gets a little tricky. <clears throat> if your computer does not have a FireWire port, and you have no means to charge it, which is because they only charge via FireWire, you're going to need to buy a Y cable. The Y cable looks just like this. It's a FireWire and USB. And what you do is you have to also buy the AC wall adapter to charge it. Now, I had to do that because my computer does not have a FireWire port, which is a shame because I thought I had everything covered. There's other options. You could buy a USB hub that has a FireWire port built in or you could just get the AC adapter and the Y cable like I did. So you plug in the wall adapter and the US and the FireWire, and then you use the USB to charge. 
So it kind of bridges off into two separate ways. So that's kind of a, that was a little upsetting because I thought I would still be able to charge uh, through USB, but I really don't mind. The wires are fairly cheap these days anyway. So if you have FireWire port on your computer, your laptop, whatever you're going to be using, uh, you don't need to worry about the Y cable. You could charge and sync through FireWire. But since I don't have a FireWire port, I had to get the Y cable so I could put songs on here while I charge it and vice versa. But that's pretty much all you need. Also, um, these batteries that you buy from iFixit.com where I got this, uh, they're really cool because they come with the opening tools, these uh, plastic little tools. And what's cool about that is it won't scratch your uh, iPod, it won't damage it. Um, it's, it's really useful. So it, even if you don't need to change the battery because it works, you might as well upgrade it because you're opening it anyway. And it will die on you. I mean, these things are 10 years old. How much longer could they possibly last? So there you have it. I'm going to be starting this next week. I'm waiting for parts to arrive. I have everything ordered. And I just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you wanted to follow along. If you wanted to do this for yourself, you could figure out what you need and order it as well. So yeah, there you have it. I'll put all the links in the description, which I bought stuff from. And most of it was eBay. I mean, the iPod was eBay. The wires were eBay. But I'll put a link in the description regardless for Amazon so the links don't die. Anyways, thanks for watching once again. Stay tuned. Next week, hopefully, I can get the video up where I show actually how to modify it.